All right, so now we're going to um, do the next lesson. And this you might have seen in, in the past in grade 7 and 8. However, we're using equations and not expressions. So that will be the biggest um, difference um, between prior years. So here is a pattern made with sticks. Figure 1 has how many sticks? Well, there's 1, 2, 3. Figure 2 has how many sticks? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Figure 3 has how many sticks? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can now see there's a pattern going on. Can you guess the pattern? Well, it looks like it's going up by 2 each time. So let's see if our guess is right. Uh, figure 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And figure 5, we're going up by 2. That would be 11. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so what is the number of sticks in the 10th figure? So you could keep on going. However, um, can you come up with the equation so that if I were to ask you what, how many sticks are in the hundredth figure, for instance, you wouldn't actually make a chart with a hundred um, figure numbers. Um, so come up with the equation. So can you figure out, it's going up by two each time, but uh, can you see if there's a correlation between the figure number and the number of sticks, meaning how would I get n equal to do something to the figure number? Well, in the first one you might say, oh, I'm just multiplying by 3. But that doesn't work for the second figure number. If you multiply that by 3, um, you don't get 5, you get 6. Same if you multiply the next one by 3, you get 9. So I'll give you a hint. The number here, this going up by 2 has something to do with the equation. And that's what we call a rate of change, um, how much it's going up by, how much it's going down by. So, for example, if it's going up by 2, try multiplying the figure number by 2. Well, if I take figure number 1 and multiply it by 2, I get 2, but the number 6 is 3. So how do I get 3? Well, you might say, oh, I add 1. Okay, so I'm going to put the 2 down and, and guess that I'm adding 1 and see if it works for the next couple. So if I multiply the second figure by 2, I get 4, and I add 1, I get 5. Hey, it works in that one. If I multiply the next figure number by 2, I get 6, and I add 1, I get 7. It works every single time. So if I want to find the number of sticks in the tenth figure, that would be 2 times the figure number, which is 10 plus 1, gives me 20 plus 1, gives me 21. Now, we kind of did some guessing and checking to get um, the equation. However, I want you to remember from now on, this number right here is the, the change rate, okay? But where does this number come from? Well, if I were to go to figure 0 using the same pattern, what number would it be? So if I'm going forward, I'm adding 2. If I'm going backwards, I'm subtracting 2, and I would get 1. Well, that is where I'm getting this second number from. This is the starting Um, amount at figure 0. Okay, so let's try this again for example 2. So here's a pattern. Figure 1 has two squares. Figure 2 has one, one, two, three, four, five. Figure 3 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what's happening each time here? It is going up by 3. 
So if I have the number of squares, I need it. I know that it's three times the figure number. But what am I? What's my starting amount? So go backwards. If I'm going up by three, what's my backwards there? Well, that would be. I'm going up by three. I'm going to subtract three, so I get negative one. Okay. Now, before we go any further, you have to check to make sure that this works every single time. For example, um, figure number four. Although I don't have a picture for it, I know going based on the pattern that it should be eleven. Same with the next one. If I'm going up by three, this should be fourteen. So let's check, for instance, if it if this equation works for figure number five. So I take three times. 5, which is 15, subtract 1, I get 14. Let's check for number figure number 4. Again, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. So it works every single time. So if I want to find the number of squares in the tenth one, that would be 3 times 10, but for the figure number, subtract 1. So that is 30 subtract 1, which gives me 29. Okay, next example. It's got figure number one. How many circles? Well, it's got three. Next one. How many circles? Well, we have that same three, and then they're adding another three more. So I have six. So it looks like they're adding three each time. Let's see. I think I have one missing right here. So that was a little oops there. So if you see, I have the six, and then I have... Actually, maybe that isn't a mistake. Looks like I have the three, and then I have the three, and then I'm adding another three. So that means nine. So it does look like I'm adding three each time. So what would figure four be? Add three to that, I get 12. Um, add three to that, I get 15. So again, if I'm going up by 3, that means the number of circles would be 3 times the figure number. Now, what is my starting number if I go back to 0? Go back, I get 0. So that means there was no initial. And so this that means all I'm doing is tripling my figure number each time. So the tenth would be 3 times 10, which is 30. So making sure when we do the equation, equation means it has an equal sign and a left than and a right than side. So you can't just write it as 3f, that would not give you full marks. You have to write it as n equals 3f. Okay, next one. This time we have toothpicks. Figure 1 has four toothpicks. Figure 2 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Figure 3 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It looks like we're going up by 3 again. So that means I can fill out the rest of my table. What is my starting amount at 0? That would be 1. So putting it all together, the number of toothpicks would be 3 times the number of figures figure number plus my initial amount, which is 1. So if I want to find the tenth figure, that would be 3 times 10 plus 1. So 30 plus 1 gives me 31. So now um, we don't have pictures anymore. We just have um, some information here. Tegan goes to a carnival, the cost for the ride is shown on the poster at the entrance. The entrance fee is $5 plus $2 a ride. So how much would it cost to go on one ride? Well, it would cost him not just $2. He has to get through the door with the $5, so it's going to cost him $7. Well, how much would it cost him for two rides? Well, again, it cost him $5. And then $2 for the first ride and another $2 for the second ride. So that would be $9. So what's happening each time when I'm going up? It's going up by an additional $2. So now, what was my initial? Like, 
Tegan can go to the carnival, not go on any rides, but it'll still cost him five dollars. So what might my equation be? Notice I always skip to doing the equation first. I would highly advise that coming up with the equation first, filling out the table, coming up with the equation, then answering the question. That should be just automatic versus um, a question actually asking it for the equation. So C equals, what are we going up by? Remember, we're going up by 2, so that means it's going to be 2 times the number of rides plus the initial cost, which is 5. So if Tegan wants to go on 10 rides, his cost would be 2 times 10 rides plus 5, so it's going to cost him $25. And make sure you put the units. All right. Last example, Marcel takes a summer job at a book packaging plant. He gets paid $50 a day plus $2 for every box he packs. Fill in the table of values. So Marcel could just show up and he gets paid $50. But then he doesn't. if he doesn't do any more boxes, that's all he gets is the $50. So if you want and you know that, you can say, ooh, what happened there? If you want, you can just say that... If he didn't do anything, he would still get paid $50. And then it's a little easier to see what's going on there. Um, if he packs two boxes, that would be 52. Because remember, he's getting paid $50 and then $2 for every box. So then what happens each time? He gets two more dollars. Do you see how I'm filling out the chart? What's happening each time? It is going up by two. So, Marcel packed 20 boxes in one day. So here's the thing. We should come up with the equation even though it's asking for how much for the 20 boxes. So, the amount of pay, remember that's how much it's going up by. So, 2 times the number of boxes plus the initial amount, which was 50. So now it's easy to find um, the 20 boxes. The pay would be... 2 times 20 boxes plus 50, so that would be 40 plus 50 gives me $90 he made that day. Now, in the assignment, you'll see in all my examples, I've always gone up by a certain number. If by chance that it goes down by a number, all that it affects is instead of a, a positive 2 times B, it would be a negative 2 times b, or whatever the variable is. So you'll notice that once you start doing some of the assignments. If it's going down by a number, that means you have to multiply it by a negative amount. If it's increasing, you're multiplying it by a positive amount. 